Hi, this is Simon, and I just want to dig in a little bit more today in doing some audio stuff in Arduino. If you haven't watched either of my last videos, you should be fine, but again, I'm going to start with some code that's similar to what we've done previously. A couple of things that I was thinking about since last time, uh, I'm switching the audio pin from 13 to 12, and I really have no idea about this, but I was thinking the other day how pin 13 also has that LED that's on the actual Arduino board, and I was wondering if maybe switching it to 12 might not be a bad idea to get that out of the circuit. The other thing that I was thinking about is I've been doing all of this math in my head to convert a delay time into a frequency. And I thought it might be useful to have a first step. Let's just put that in our code so we can specify a frequency instead of doing that math ourselves every time. Let's first test this, I guess. Upload. All right, that's sounding good. Uh, as always, unplug my board. Int frequency. And let's set that to, for example, 440, A440. Let's not set our decay time here. Instead, let's set our decay time in our loop. Now, right now, if I'm just specifying the frequency as a constant at the top here, rather than changing in real time, I could probably put it in the setup. But let's assume that later I'm going to want a knob or something that affects the frequency so we should put in loop so it checks every time. So delay time equals... Let's figure this out. So we've been doing 1000 milliseconds, but now we're in microseconds. So let's do 1 million divided by frequency times 0.5. Now, the reason we have this 0.5 is, again, half of the cycle, it goes up, it delays, it goes down, it delays. The reason we have the 1 million is because there's 1 million microseconds per second. And we want to have 440 cycles per second. Let's give this a try. Plug in our board. Old program running. Okay, 440. So an octave above that should be 880. Uh, an octave below, well, two octaves below that should be 220. 100 hertz. Uh, 2000 hertz. Okay, I don't know for sure, but I think that might be working. Now, the other thing that I was thinking of is we've been doing all of these pulse waves, right? We've been doing these waves that are either on or off because we're using the digital write. We're using the digital pin here, and then we're digital writing high and digital writing low. Again, it's either on or off. And we've been doing square waves, which means it has the same time up and the same time down. But there are different types of pulse waves and we can change this ratio to create new timbres. Again, we can maintain a frequency, but we'll change the timbres. So let's try to do that. So instead of delay time here, let's make an int on time. So this will be the time, time that the pin is high. Int off time, time that the pin is low. And then we're going to want a pulse width. I'm doing a float so I can have decimal points. There are different kinds of decimals, but let's just use the float for today. But ints only let me do integers, a whole number. So I, I need, if I want fractions or if I want decimals, I need to do a float. Float, pulse, width. And let's just start by making this 0 0.5 for now. Ratio of 
on to off. Okay, so now to make that square wave, delay time doesn't exist anymore. So let's copy this and paste it. And we'll change this one to be our on time and this one to be our off time. So right now they're both times 0.5. Let's just take this pulse width the pulse width there and then this one will be one minus the pulse width oh my goodness what a typing day there we go so let's think about this we have 0.5 so this is still our square wave right 50 percent up 50 percent down so this on time it's 1 million divided by the frequency again that gives us the time of a cycle times how much of that cycle is on. Okay, it's 50% on. Then this is 1 million divided by the frequency. Again, the time for the cycle times 1 minus that pulse width. Again, if that's 0.5, it's still going to be a square wave. Let's test this out. I'm going to bring this back down to 440 for fun. Oops, what have I done wrong? Oh, I did not capitalize my T here. Fixed. And of course, I'm going to have to plug in my board before I upload. Let's just verify while it enters that board. Oh, delay microsync. Oh, I made the mistake of not replacing these. So I need my on time there and my off time there. Okay. Old program, uploading the new one. Okay. So now let's change this pulse width to point. Seven five. So now you can hear that's the same frequency, but we have a different timbre. By changing the pulse width, we're changing the harmonic makeup. Let's go eight seven five. Back to the square wave. Okay, that's pretty neat. What would be even neater is if we have a way to control it in real time. So once again, let's set up our potentiometer. And you know, I have an LDR here too, but um, I'm just gonna set up my potentiometer to control that pulse width right now. Voltage to one outside pin, that's coming from the five volts. Other outside pin is going to ground. Center pin to A0. Back to my code, we need to read int pot pin equals A0. Potentiometer. Okay, and now we need to read from that. We need to read before we choose that on time and off time, right? So now let's go pulse width equals. Now keep in mind that that analog read is reading 0 to 1024. Hmm. Let's do a little bit of math, but let's be a little bit lazy and let's have it do the math for us. So I'm going to use this map. This map lets you map a set of integers to another set of integers. So we're going to map. What are we going to map? We're going to map analog read from the pot pin. We're going to map that from its original 0 to 1023. We're going to map that now to 1 to 999. Basically, I want 0 to 1000, but I never want it to be 0 for either of them. And it's nice to just keep that. Now, the problem with this is now I have 1 to 999. And what I want is 0.001 to 0.999. So I'm going to multiply this by 0.001. Very 
verify to find my mistakes. Hasn't found them. Plug in the board. Old program, uploading the new one. That's pretty neat, that's working pretty well. I could change this, I could make this uh, 500. Now the reason for this is we don't really perceive the difference between 0.25 and 0.75 pulse width. Um, I'll have to throw up an image here to, to help show that. We don't hear the difference between those because they're essentially the same to our ears. But let's upload this. Hey, and that's working pretty great. Uh, I mean, you know, okay. You probably know how to do this, but uh, let's uh, let's just set up one for the pulse width, int, pot, pin, and we'll call it pot pin one and pot pin two. I should really have better names for them. We'll call this one A1, and then this will be the pin for frequency. Okay. I'm doing this the opposite way that I usually do. I'm, I'm doing the code first. And so now let's put frequency equals map. And so we know this needs to be pot, pot pin one. I'm gonna just copy this for a moment. Now our frequency can be an integer, so I don't need to do that multiplication at the end. Let's read pot pin two. And again, its initial range is zero to 1023. What frequencies do I want? Let's say we'll map it from 100 to 2000. Now, this will map it linearly. We might not want that. Pitch is related to frequency exponentially, so that this will be a little bit interesting. Of course, now I need to hop over to my board, set up that other potentiometer. That's the 100K. Here's another 100K. I'm gonna put the ground and the voltage to these rails so I can just use short wires. Check to make sure. Voltage, yes, yes. Ground, yes, yes. A1, A2. All right. Plug it in. Okay, there's the old program. Verify, didn't make any mistakes. Let's upload it. Okay, pulse width. Frequency. I keep knocking out my... There we go, now we have two separate knobs, one that's doing pitch, frequency, and one that's doing the timbre. That's pretty neat. That's all I wanted to do for today. You can easily switch out these potentiometers for an LDR, light dependent resistor, or any other kind of sensor. Accelerometers, infrared sensors, and you can make something neat. Let me know what you come up with.